those guys who have called in their prayer requests, minister unto every need. You know our needs even before we ask. Right now, God, we beseech you to have mercy upon us. Remember, God, those who are convalescent. There are those, God, who are bereavement. We know that you are too wise to make a mistake. We're praying for the Corey family. We're praying for Mother Walker, God. Continue to touch, God, and Sister Carol and her family. Lord, remember all those who have called in and say, help. We need you, God, right now to move in a special way. Bless us on today, and we shall be blessed. Keep us, Lord, and we shall be kept. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ. As that name every niche should bow and every tongue confess all things in heaven, all things in earth.
absolutely necessary to the limited fruits of God's word because souls are involved. There's a need of war that goes on every day. Fruits of demons coming against the Prince of Peace. And the souls involved are the lives of men. And it is incumbent on every soldier to deliver the word of God. It's not a compromise. Yes. And does not have any regards in any respect. One above another. But it is applicable to everybody. The Bible declares for the grace of God to bring its salvation. As Titus recorded, has appeared unto all men, teaching us that un denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should have solely righteousness and godly in this present world. I have a message that I've chosen today. And of course, the subject is the power of the church. Yes. The power of the church. It is understanding that we must come to a complete understanding of who is the church. Who makes up the church. What are the qualifications to be a part of the church. What are the requirements? One just does not make it up in his or her mind that I was simply having a minister, have the secretary to place my name on the church roll and shake hands with the pastor. And I'm in the church. Jesus declared that you must be born in Bethlehem. Born of the water and born of the Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out. They shall speak in new tongues of the language. They shall take up servants. Yeah. And if they drink any deadly things, they shall not harm them. And finally, they shall lay a hand on the sick. And the sick shall recover. And Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If you would focus your attention there, these are the words of Jesus. Some of the last words that he said to his disciples and those that were gathered there in a number to observe his departure, to observe, watch him as he leave earth and go beyond earth's atmosphere, past the protos, all the love, clover spin, all the spheres that you want to call, and drop him off by a cloud on the right hand of the Father in heaven. He said unto them in chapter 1 verse 8, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all should be here, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Note here, he says, you shall receive power. Man. He's talking to those that are about to enter into the church. They were religious leaders. Inclusive in them was the very woman that birthed Jesus into the world. Jesus had four brothers 
And of course, he had at least two sisters. It doesn't mention his sisters in the text, but he mentions Jesus' mother and his brothers. He said to them, and we'll find out in just a moment, in verse 12 and verse 14, all of those that were in the number that followed the instructions of Jesus. But he says to them, you shall receive power. Now the principal spokesman for the group was Peter. We find out later that Peter preached the first message of Greece. First message that came from the church. He was a bad boy. He was violent. Cut off, service heel off. Cursed. And his denial of the person of Jesus. Because he had followed Jesus for three to one and a half years. What are the principles? Individuals that stay close to Jesus, but he was powerless without the Holy Ghost. Ah. Powerless without the Holy Ghost. So Jesus says to them, after you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to be my witnesses. And Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria yes. and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49, this was just prior to when he spoke to them, was recorded in Acts. Chapter 1, verse 4. Luke 24, verse 49. And behold, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He vividly explained to them. The power of the Holy Ghost of the Father has sent in his name. Yes, thank you. Lord. Who would be a, an advocate, a teacher, an instructor, a support counts for them. But you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he promised them. And now in Acts 1 and 8, he goes southern. They had to prepare themselves to go into the upper room and wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Who was in this group, he asked? Who was in this group? In chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, they returned, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room yes. where the Lord listened to those that were in this room waiting for the Holy Spirit. They have brought Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the Zealots, and Judas, the brother of James. Oh, these 
soul continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. Yes. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Jesus' four brothers. They were in the school. There were about 120 of them. So if even the woman that birthed Jesus in the world had to be filled with the Holy Ghost, what makes any other individual think that they are exempted? The devil wants you to think so because he wants your soul. There's no way to get around the word of God. God's word is out of the cloud. It is as solid as the rock of the world. It stands. It doesn't deviate. Him not condemned. God's word is impeccable. His word is true. The woman who burned Jesus in the world. Lord tells her, you must go. I don't know what he called her mom, mom, or what he called her. But let her know she had to have the Holy Spirit. She carried him for nine months. But if she carried him, and then she had to be to receive the Holy Ghost. What about your mama? What about your mama? What about your mama? That are listening to this cast. And the brothers of Jesus. He lived as an ordinary child. He was human and he was divine. As a child, he had the skills of a child. He had to be trained because he was human. Yes. My body declared when they returned from Jerusalem after they found Jesus in the temple, the lawyers, the doctors, those that are high up on the stratification list, educated, and the Jewish theology, talking to them, questioning and answer to them. And when Mary found that he was not with them when they were going back home, she returned and there she found him in the temple. And the Bible says he grew in stature. These were taught, but he grew up in stature. And not only that, he grew in wisdom. He grew in knowledge. Because he was human. The God part of him was not to manifest itself until the time had come. Now, he has died. He has gone to the grave. And he has risen from the dead. And now he's giving his instructions to those that would become a part of his body. The church is the body of Christ. Yeah. The ecclesia. Yeah. You're drawn out from the world and you fall into his body. And the Bible declared that by one spirit or we all baptized into one body, both Jew and Gentile. It was incomprehensible to those that is set at the feet of the greatest men and listen to the theology relative to the Jews to understand how the Gentiles alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. And how now God takes the Gentiles and the Jews 
and make one the body of Christ. He declared Romans chapter 8 verse 9. They that have not the spirit of Christ are not of his. Amen. So that means that one can only become a part of the church by virtue of the reception of the receiving of the Holy Ghost. These that we are emphasizing today are those who were the beginning and the birth of the church. These are the ones. Now let us go to Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And the Bible declared, when the day of Pentecost I fully come, they were all and one place. They were all with one accord in this place. And some of the candles sound from heaven <coughs> as a rushing of a mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared under them cloven tongues, multitude, several tongues. <coughs> Like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all spoke in other tongues. Now, I must emphasize one fact here that has confused the Christian world. That is the Holy Spirit. Those that receive the Holy Spirit speak in tongues. It is recorded in the 12th chapter of the book of First Corinthians. Not all speak in tongues. What has consumed is in Catholic today. From the 12th through the 14th chapters of the book of 1 Corinthians relates to the gifts of the Spirit. And when he say, not all speak in tongues, he's talking about the gifts. Not everyone has the gift of tongues. But every believer that receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit will speak in another language. Maybe in many languages. They all spoke in tongues. Yes. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with a new language. And later on, at the house of Canadians, people would get delivered the word of God to them. And the Holy Spirit fell on those that were there. Then Peter said, Can any man to be the water that these should not be baptized as well as we? For they received the Holy Ghost like us. For what? We heard them speak in tongues. Yeah. And furthermore, Acts chapter 19, they were the followers of John. They believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God because John's message was a fast message that was chosen in the New Testament to preach the person of Jesus Christ. They were followers of John the Baptist, but now John is dead and off the scene. There were things that they were not privy to. They didn't receive it from John's message, but they would believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And Paul asked them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? They must have missed the first part of John's message. As John said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, chapter 3 and 5. 
He can't preach it. Say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he said, one point, I ain't be baptized in the water. But there's one coming after me. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. They must have missed that message that John preached. For they said, we have not so much as heard. Well, there'll be an Holy Ghost. Then Paul politely did not condemn them. Say, God, then what were you baptized? Oh, this is we are baptized in the Jordan baptism in the He said, John, we are baptized unto repentance, telling the people to believe on the one that's coming on. Of course, that is on Jesus Christ. But they heard this, they were baptized. And what does the apostle do? He lays his hand on them, they receive the Holy Ghost, and guess what? They spoke in tongues and prophesied. So, the evidence of the Holy Spirit is speaking in other tongues because you pray a sinner's prayer that does not fill you with the Holy Spirit. Well, of course, you can receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues while you're repenting. Because one of the first steps says you have to believe. And next, you have to repent. You turn from your sins because you still fire a second prayer. Does not mean you turn from your sins. True repentance brings change. True repentance brings change. And they were ready after waiting 10 days for the Holy Ghost to come. And the devil wanted to stop this church. But Jesus said, after, not before. Right. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Power to cast out demons. To put the demons to flight. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Lay hands on the sick. And we shall be healed. My God. Bring a word of hope to somebody that's lost and find the way to the cross. Oh God, I preach. The devil wants to stop the church. He cannot bring the toys there over the church. He said upon this rock I build the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The demons of hell may come to stop it, but they never become triumphant over my church. Can somebody in Africa give God a praise for that? Now can somebody in Asia give him a praise for that? Can somebody down in South America give him a praise right now? Can somebody in the hills of Mexico, Dios take my dear, Alabama, hells and so right now, praise him. Can somebody in America lift your hands up and shout to the Lord and give him a praise right now? Oh, oh this one, I feel my chance. Yes, I do. Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's church is all powerful because the Lord is on the inside of you. Sometimes you don't understand the power that's invested in you by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost is in you. That's Jesus in an abstract form, in an invisible form, that's on the inside of you. He said, greater is he that's in you, all that's in me, that he, that is in the world. His church is all powerful. His church is not a social agency. It's all powerful. It's all powerful. He 
sent his disciples after the Holy Ghost. He didn't believe it on me. The works that I do, you should do also. Can I get a witness now? The Holy Ghost on the inside of you gives you the power to put demons to a fight. The Holy Ghost on the inside of you gives you the authority to command miracles to take place. The Holy Ghost
and I got it because I like to make it. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm talking in other tongues. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the joy. I got the soul. I got the soul. I got the soul. If you got the Holy Ghost, 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 yes, you hear me. I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah! It's a fire, a mighty body. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Get ready for part two. 